Hello everybody, it is me, Atari HMB, and today's video is going to specifically speak on dimensional tiering and how it is done right. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Now, most people who've seen dimensional tiering probably ran into the concept of it throughout Marvel comics, particularly that talk about existing on higher dimensional planes. But that's not the only place. It really comes, as well for most people, from the Versus Battle Wiki. And although Comic Vine and many other places may talk about it, this is the particular algorithm that most people rely on. So it comes down to, what is a dimensional tier? Well, a tier, as we know, is a level, particularly in reference to a hierarchy. And in terms of dimensionality, it has to be a little bit more complex than what you see on most forums. But I'll put it this way. Dimensional tiering is a metric that is utilized to articulate a character's particular power when it seems like a limit has been reached or can be surpassed. And what that means particularly is that when a character hits, let's say, a level of infinite power, that doesn't automatically mean they can beat another character who in another storyline was expressed to have a higher level of infinity i.e. Kirby's infinite power versus someone like the Spectre. Now this seems like it's very simple and straightforward, but in reality it is not. There's a lot of controversy around this, and that's because there are about four particular points of dimensional tiering I'd like to include, or in terms of just dimensionality. And that has to do with spatial dimensions, temporal dimensions, astral dimensions, and worldly dimensions, or universal dimensions. This could also include string theory and membranes and the functions of just strings itself, but you get the main picture. The point is, dimensional tiering, or just in general, string theory and the idea of higher dimensions are never the same, even among physicists. And this even includes cosmologists such as Max Tegmark, who talks about multiverse theory and how they are different types of multiverse theories. Now, although in real life we call them theories, for a fictional idea, there really is no idea of theory, per se. A fiction expresses its cosmology through its story, data books, or just in general, the writing. And that's the main key factors we have to use in order to illustrate how they function in terms of power scaling, since that's what most of this is, is for the versus battle purposes. But again, as you may know, people do disagree, and people also are not as educated and are highly able to misunderstand this topic. Somebody I used to be in contact with who went by the name Mysterious Universe or Death of the Endless, he may make his appearance in the comments below, but even he would talk to me before about how the concept of destroying a timeline could even be more impressive than destroying a finite number of universal constructs that would be classified as a multiverse. And this is because of what they call in Minkowski space, which in this particular part you need to take notes for this, a Minkowski space is nothing more but like a film strip or a line of a series of events of things that may have occurred in a spatial universe that's pretty much captured, you know, as you may see it on screen. And this Minkowski space line does protrude forward and backwards like a timeline. However, although you use the term timeline, that doesn't always mean it's going to always be spatially 4D. Because again, with series like Dragon Ball, that doesn't really work the same way. Because you have instances where another existence can be within the existence of a timeline. Basically two timelines working within a bigger timeline. 
but I think it's going to take more than just words to get the point to you, so let me illustrate. And this is the importance of cosmology. For example, let's take a look at the Room of Spirit and Time, which has a different flow of time, and let's look at the general universe for Dragon Ball, which according to Daizenshu 4 implies the universe is infinite, and according to Trunks' statement also gives in the impression that the Room of Spirit and Time is also infinite. Now looking at these two, what classifies them as a time continuum is the aspect that they have different segments of history and time flow, as well as being spatially separate. Now, whatever the spatial wall is or the space between universes are that are separating these two, we have to know that it's done for a reason. As it's been shown and implicated in the series, Buhan destroying the spatial wall and tearing it apart that he would use to cover the living world was enough to cause spatial distortions, which would even include temporal distortions, which temporality is time-related, would actually cause destruction upon the entire construct of the macrocosm, which includes the afterlife, which is why he would classify as a upper 2C being. And that's why the cosmology of the Dragon Ball macrocosm is technically a miniature multiverse. Because again, although they may have two separate continuums, they still have different operations of time and space. And that as a result is a reason to why it doesn't need to be a timeline necessarily to classify it as a lower 2C dimensionality. As long as it showcases that it has that level of existence, this is important to the level of power scaling that is done. In addition to that, I also want to include Mortal Kombat in this as well, and similar to Dragon Ball, think of it like this. You have the seven realms in Mortal Kombat, which all are about infinite, according to Ed Boon, and they all have different constructs of history. Now, outside of the Kami Dogo, Wherever their existence is in the space between their universes, we don't really know how to quantify, but we know logically it's usually one right angle above the other. That's generally how it works when you're talking about continuums and universal existences. However, all seven realms do have separate timelines, but they all work under the structure of one, what I'd like to call, a super timeline which again goes to show they each have a different timeline and set of history, and that's what we call a set, and then all of them existing into one giant timeline, similar to Dragon Ball having 12 different universes existing in the neutral zone, which exist in a giant timeline. That is what you call a subset. So having a set with a subset, which in Mortal Kombat's case, it exists on an infinite level, this would mean destroying such infinite level of subsets would put you at a higher dimensional hierarchy, depending on how you scale it. And that's what I'm talking about. Again, let me just make this clear. And again, I'm telling you, not every Minkowski space or timeline is automatically fourth dimensional only. Again, it that's not what it is. That's a fallacious limitation put upon the structure of a fictional cosmology. Every fiction is completely different on how they structure themselves and don't scale the same depending on how you view it. This is even precedent in modern day theorists who talk about cosmology or modern day cosmologists and physicists, when they talk about string theory or multiverse theory, they don't have the same ideas. So when it comes to this crucible itself, we have to know that it's always going to be different. And I think that's very important because it seems nobody on the Versus Battle Wiki really knows this and only a few do. And again, although the idea and concept of dimensional tiering they have on their page for the algorithm set upon its purpose, is ingenious, but it's not executed right, and there's a lot of flaws within it. Another example was when somebody brought up to me, to my attention, 
For example, a user brought up the Invisible Dragon as an attempt to downplay Goku. A false equivalence fallacy at that, but let's take a look. At his lower 2C power as Universe Plus, he is able to stack on a 25 septillion times multiplier. Okay? That's fine. And he's only Universe Plus still. Now yes, he would be. He'd only be Universe Plus times 25 septillion. The problem with comparing this to someone like Goku is the similar case of what SSJ Ryu talked about in his video. Goku has shown himself to not affect one Universal Plus construct, but more than one. He has already affected separate space-time continuums in the entire series. So when you stack on Goku's multiplier, we already classified and quantified him as being able to affect more than one space-time continuum. So a multiplier can be quantified in his calculations. Again, most Western cultures don't even know what the term Tenkai refers to when it comes to understanding the Dragon Ball cosmology. And again, you're going to see this a lot because they don't really understand how in Japanese the term Sekai doesn't really quantify always as planetary. That's more Wakuse. You use Sekai for societal purposes when expressing a smaller society or a greater one up to universal proportions. Or you could just use the term Ichu, which is universe specific. So again, it depends on the context of whatever is being expressed. And again, I've spoken with a Japanese native himself who even he understands Toriyama. He says, Toriyama, -san, Toriyama sensei was somebody who made a construct of a higher world or a world that or more of a religious world is the term he utilized but a separate world a separate continuum within their culture eastern culture doesn't articulate everything the same as western get that across your head and that's also why you see a couple other verses that are still downplayed i mean even in the men in black even, let's talk about western films men in black the character the alien who has a marble full of 3A universes or other constructs that could even be lower to, uh, 2C, he's not even considered 2B, despite him transcending their concept of reality. I mean, again, he's throwing the marble and they don't feel any quaking in their universe, which already shows he's likely orthogonally in a higher dimensional plane, obviously. But again, that's the point. You can have a three-dimensional character affect higher dimensional beings or objects and structures and temporalities and astrals. Just as the same, a 4D being can't interact with a 3D and a 3D can't interact with a 4D unless it's in fiction for the most part. And again, a 4D world usually is logically one right angle larger than a 3D world, so the range of motion quantifiably makes it larger. That's why when I destroy a 5D structure, it's more infinitely impressive than a 4D structure, especially if it's a continuum that exists infinitely. That's why, again, if you destroy a 5D construct, which in theory can fit infinite universes within itself, even if the structure is empty, it still classifies as infinite universal because you destroyed a structure that can contain more infinity sets than it even needs to. So again, it depends solely upon what's the feat, what's the verse, what's being scaled, and much, much more. And again, the culture and the cosmology, I stress this again, is the most important part for any type of dimensional tiering if you want it to be functionable and close to as objective as possible as you need it. Now again, I'm not going to go around throwing out numeric numbers and values upon where Dragon Ball characters are. I mean, you can even interpret the macro verse to be six dimensional if you want to, depending on how you really want to look at the space between universes. I mean, if you want to consider the afterlife 5D if you want to and say, oh, it's infinitely higher than the other 4D continuums and the pendulum room and all that, and then the space between universes is technically 6D or whatever because it doesn't intertwine or intermingle with the Kaioshin realm and therefore the entire structure as a whole ensemble makes it 6D, you can go about and do that. I, I, that's, I, I doubt that's exactly how it scales, but the point is stop limiting other verses just because you don't really understand the concept of what they're talking about in the culture. They already have pages about, you know, different levels of speed and 
other beings and different astral existences, fourth wall breaking, these are awesome, but they need to show more expression of how it can also be interpreted. Let's take a look at one more analysis, and that has to do with astral dimensions. And who's going to be the guest for this particular point? Well, let's use Nakaruru from Samurai Showdown. What? Small Why? city level? Why? Because Nakaruru is a character upon the stupid? SNK compilation who has been shown to exist on an astral dimension. Now, most people look at this and say, all right, astral, big deal. But it's not just a big deal. It really is a big deal because in the SNK interpretations for the manga, I've already had helpers bro, translate the official scans. Time. It's Look called it, a space-time. It, According to Xanadu, it. he pronounced it as a different space-time where she is causing distortions upon space-time itself as existing in another plane of existence. This makes sense as well because Nakaruru has feats and scaling that goes to characters who've even literally went to the edge of eternity. Now, eternity is a metric utilized to measure infinite time, rather forward and backwards, because it's eternal. Now, if you're standing at the edge of infinity for eternity, which is a unit of time, temporality, in this case, or the Minkowski, if we're asserting what we learned earlier, this already, this literally already proves that they're infinite fourth dimensional plus or are beings who can traverse and transcend through time to stand on such an edge, which gives infinite speed. And again, as I've shown before, there's already places to put Nakaruru at these universal levels. All shout outs to my boy Alba G for that. But the main purpose I'm going with here is just to give you guys an example and an idea of how different series have different levels of dimensional tiering and how it can be absurded differently depending on what is stated in the story and what is being looked at. And no, this isn't an outlier. We need to have dimensional tiering understood. And that was the purpose of this video, is to make dimensional tiering more understood, approachable, and more flexible. The definitions the Versus Battle Wiki does is excellent, but its execution upon the knowledge that fans express when articulating it is very limited and very closed-minded and one-sided. So with that said, this is just one example of what dimensional tiering is and how it needs to be done. This has been my video by Atari HMB. And that's Feats and Analysis, Episode 4, The True Understanding of Dimensional Tearing. Be sure to leave a like. Please share this video, especially with those who need to be educated. Be sure to also comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. This has been Atari h &B, and I'm signing off. Peace. Xeno Goku beats Reinhardt.